Okay, so this week's uh, free floating, free flowing <laughs> will focus on a very specific issue. And uh, I'll talk about one of my favorite hematolymphoid populations, and those are hematogones, or little baby B cells growing up in the bone marrow. And we will see why it is so important to recognize the features of hematogones because that will help us differentiate immature B cells that we find in the bone marrow from a BALL. Uh, technically, it's not called a B acute lymphoblastic leukemia anymore. I should say B lymphoblastic leukemia slash lymphoma. That's the WHO term. So precursor B cell tumors uh, can be differentiated from hematogones, and they are always different from hematogones. Uh, but to know that, uh, we need to know what hematogones look like. So this, this is what hematogones uh, basically look like. Uh, this is a 17-year-old boy's bone marrow, and as labeled here, the green are the granulocytes. The black cells here are the monocytes. This blue population is a nice internal lymphocyte control. These are the mature B lymphocytes. You can see they're nicely splitting into kappa and lambda and CD20 positive. And what we will focus on is this red population. And I've already given you the answer. This red population is hematogones. Uh, remember how T cells grow up in the thymus and they go through their negative and positive selection to eventually come out as naive T cells and go and populate secondary lymphoid structures all across the body. In the same way, this process for B cells in human beings takes place in the bone marrow. Uh, they were so B for bone marrow, but really B was for the bursa or fibricious. Uh, that's how they were named. But luckily, even in human beings, it happens from a B named structure. So in the bone marrow is where they're growing up and undergoing their uh, negative positive type selection. So eventually they will go out of the bone marrow as naive B cells to populate our immune system. So this red population is that of hematogones. And what we will do is we will go dot plot by dot plot and discuss the features of hematogones. And the cool thing about this is uh, hematogones will replicate these features almost every time in every specimen in every individual. So it is a really useful exercise to know in and out what hematogones look like. And that way you can make a very confident diagnosis of a B lymphoblastic leukemia uh, if something deviates from this normal. So in terms of the forward and side scatter, they don't have much granularity, but this red population uh, varies from small cells uh, up to about medium-sized cell, maybe a few large ones sometimes. So they are variable in size at that stage. And eventually they go down to the size of a mature B lymphocyte. Okay, so there's variability in hematogone size. In fact, if you look at CD19 versus forward scatter, if you get used to looking at these, you'll almost always know that there are hematogones going to be there in the specimen. What, what about... Uh, this part, 22 versus 10. So the way we know something is a hematogone, the defining marker is really a B cell marker, pan B cell marker like CD22 or CD19 and CD10 co-expression. So CD10, mind you, is also called CALA, common ALL antigen. So in the context of an ALL, CD10 positivity used to be called a CALA positive ALL. It had its own connotations. So, but hematogones are also defined by positivity for CD10 and the B cell marker. So they are CD10 positive, but also dim for CD22 compared to mature B cells. So their maturation spectrum here indicated by this arrow is from dim 22 to bright 22 as they lose their CD10. So when they become CD10 negative, we don't call them hematogones anymore. We, uh, they basically become mature B cells. Okay, so that's that one. Then, what about 34 versus 20? This is a great, so these four markers, 22, 10, 34, 20, or just 19, 10, 34, 20, those four markers 
will usually tell you that something is a hematogon. And so here's a, a very nice representation of what hematogons do. They start as a distinct subset of CD34 positive cells. And as if they abruptly drop it one day, there'll be a distinct 34 positive, and then boom, they will drop CD34 uh, expression. And only after doing that, only after dropping CD34 expression, they will eventually gain CD20 and become mature B cells, okay? So distinct subset of 34 positive, not like a big smear, distinct subset. And then they drop 34 before they gain 20, so there is no significant population that is co-expressing 34 and 20. So 34 immature marker, CD20 mature B cell marker. So they follow this very nice spectrum, okay? Now in terms of the CD10 versus 20 here, they start off, see this little blush of CD10 brighter cells, also seen over here in this 22 versus 10 uh, plot. They start a little bit brighter for CD10, then they become moderate positive for CD10. And this, uh, sometimes people use this to define stage one, stage two, stage three hematogons. So they become uh, moderate for CD10. Then they start gaining 20. So they gain almost full spectrum CD20. So nice smear. This is a, a perfect hematogon smear on 10 versus 20. And then they will eventually drop CD10 and become mature B lymphocytes. Right, so that's that they gain 20, and then this population drops CD10. CD19 positive through all stages. So CD19 is just a pan B cell marker, doesn't have quite the spectrum of CD20. Hematogons are defined by CD19 positivity, and they do not express any myeloid markers, obviously. These are normal B cells, no myeloid markers. And here's another one, two more myeloid markers in this panel, 33 and 15. And again, these hematogons down here, all the mature B cells for that matter, do not express myeloid markers. Okay? Now, hematogons, as you can express in, in mature B cells, they will start negative for surface immunoglobulin. And as they mature, they are either going to become kappa positive, so nice streaming of these cells here, and streaming of these cells here. So these are again hematogons gaining surface kappa, gaining surface lambda to eventually become mature B cells. Down here, this, this is a nice uh, dot plot for detection of ALL actually. So uh, hematogons start CD45 dim positive, then they become moderate positive and eventually bright as they become mature B cells, okay? So that's the CD45 expression. And uh, I'll, I'll finish one train of thought first here, and then I'll come back to the CD38. So CD45 dim to moderate to bright. And here, again, similar to the CD34 phenomenon up here, similar TDT expression, a distinct subset of TDT positive cells, and then they drop TDT, and then eventually they will gain more CD22. So once again, two distinct subsets, TDT positive and negative, not a big smear or not all DDT positive, okay? And so the point to be made here is here. So the CD45 dim stage is loosely equivalent to the CD34 positive stage. As you can see, these are the most immature ones, which is also loosely equivalent to this TDT positive stage and which is loosely equivalent to the CD10 brighter population. So this cluster would be the CD45 dim one the TDT positive one and the 34 positive one. So trying to put this all into those six dimensions that this is stained for, okay? Then coming back to this uh, 38 expression, CD38, as you can see, is very uniformly bright. Up here, this gray population on the top, on the ceiling are plasma cells. CD38 expression on hematogon is just dimmer than plasma cells. So very nice, uniformly bright positive, and in many ALLs, you're gonna have this, this uh, uh, 45 versus 38 reveal some aberrancy. They're gonna underexpress CD45 and typically also variably and, uh, and underexpress CD38. So very useful way to look at uh, tumors. 
plasma cells are bad ones are also going to lie in this, this area of 45 and 38, but I digress. So, so, the, so the, these are the basic features of hematogons. You can look at these plots in different ways, depending on what panel you do, but you will almost always be able to detect hematogons following a very nice pattern. And once you get used to this pattern in you, with your stains, with your instruments, in every, look at them in every bone marrow specimen that comes through. And once you get used to that, you will be very confident when you come across a minimal residual disease or very tiny population of a uh, neoplastic precursor B cell population, it will always, always deviate from this uh, very replicable pattern of hematogons. Okay? So what do BALLs do? B lymphoblastic leukemia lymphoma. As I said, almost all cases. In a study we did a long time ago, we did about 200, 300 cases. And in that study, at least all of them showed some aberrancy. But just, uh, just not to say all cases, I'm saying almost all cases of BLL, B lymphoblastic leukemia, have aberrancies compared to hematogons. And, and these are the aberrancies. Uh, like I said, you know, they don't have this distinct TDT 34 subset. They have either uniform or a spectrum of uh, TDT or 34 expression, under expression of 45. Over expression of CD10 is quite typical. ALLs tend to be brighter for CD10 than hematogons. Under expression of CD38, like I talked about, under expression of CD20, sometimes stuck at the immature stage. Then I talked about the asynchronous expression, so co-expression of 34 and 20 at the same time. Of course, expression of myeloid antigens, very common, 85 to 90% of cases, almost 20% will show three myeloid antigens sometimes. And then expression of T cell associated antigens in a small minority of cases. So you will almost always have a barency, that's the point. So try to go back and look at those hematogon slides and look at hematogons in your own lab in every bone marrow specimen. They're going to be there. Uh, I mean, they'll be absent in some, particularly myelodysplastic syndromes and post-chemo and stuff like that. But regenerating marrow is a great place to look for them. So you will, if you get used to seeing these by yourself, you will not miss even a tiniest population of B lymphoblastic leukemia. And so... Here's just one example of BALL, and I'll go slowly to just uh, show you the various aberrancies. That this one already probably is doing four or five things wrong compared to hematogons. As you can tell, this red blob separated from the mature B cell, so already bright for CD10. It's almost too bright for CD22. Remember how they, they were over here, dimmer for 20, so that's a subtle one. This is not subtle at all. All of them express CD34. So these are definitely not hematogons. And not just that, a part of this 34 population is also expressing CD20 asynchronously. No business for cells to be in this quadrant right here, right? Underexpressing CD45, very typical. Underexpressing CD38, remember? That very nice, uniformly bright 38 cluster we had over here. This is nowhere in that area. This is in the bad area of. 45 versus 38. Uh, here is where hematolymphoid neoplasms can sit. 19 looks fine. Oops. 19 looks fine. HLA-DR I didn't show you, but th this is too variable. Normally, it would be a nice tight cluster. I didn't show you its expression on hematogons, but hematogons would sit just like B cells, you know, mature B cells right there. And then TDT again, no clear subset, positive, negative. You've got this spectrum of... Uh, expression of CD, uh, of TDT, and that's an aber another aberrancy. So just one example of BLL, I can show you many, many more uh, in subsequent uh, lectures, but here's a uh, very easy principle. Hematogones have a particular pattern, and all cases of B lymphoblastic leukemia will diverge from that pattern. Okay, that's the principle. And so I will leave you with this slide of these uh, beautiful population <laughs> of uh, little B cells going to B cell school. With that, I will stop recording.